Did Neanderthals and humans look the same? Well, that is a good question. <laughs> well, um, you know, if you look at this picture I've got here, I was going to show it later on, but you can see how different they are. I mean, let me just ask you straight forward. Can you tell which of the two is the Neanderthal <laughs> skull? <laughs> the one on the left. Yeah, uh, it's obvious that, uh, you know, they were different. In fact, uh, there, is, uh, there are quite a bit of descriptions here. You have one from uh, Chris Stringer, uh, Nova 2013, decoding Neanderthals. He says the following. He says, we can tell a Neanderthal skull 100% of the time. 100% of the time, you can tell a Neanderthal skull. That's how different they were. And uh, you can see from, those, from that picture, you don't need to be an expert. You can look and say, well, you know, there is a difference. This guy's an ape and we are not. So we look quite a bit different. Here's a description now from Yul Rack, History Channel 2000, Secrets of the Stone Age. He says the following, uh, Andathos developed a very unique facial architecture. It's as if somebody took the face and pulled them and the rest of the face is stretching behind. Another thing that is very distinct in Homo sapiens is the fact that we do have a chin. This protuberance is absent completely from the mandible of Neanderthals. So uh, these guys look different. I think you would recognize a Neanderthal if you walked uh, out there in the forest and saw one. He would look probably more like a gorilla. Uh, I have to believe that he had hair all over his body. And, uh, and that's because he had no reason to lose it. You know, and uh, then the question pops up, why did we lose our hair? Because we are probably the only hominid that lost it. So there are differences between at least Neanderthals and us, you know. And so the question also comes up uh, in the case of that mixture. But wait, with the hairiness, we don't know how much hair they actually had. There's no skull that has the hairs attached to it, does it? Yeah, so, we so haven't... So anytime we're talking about hair... Where it's um, speculation. speculation. Yeah, we, we haven't found um, hair, you know, on the body or you know, skin or anything like that from the Neanderthal. So we, we have no idea what the external uh, uh, aspect of a Neanderthal was like. All we can do is uh, theorize based on, you know, just uh, ideas that we have on, on what we think they might have had. The surrounding circumstances of where, where they were found, how far, yeah. how long ago they were found. So you kind of have to put the puzzle pieces around it to figure out what they actually looked like. Yeah, and, uh, you know, if, if we part from this base that um, Homo erectus left Africa 1.8 million years ago, we found some in, in a country called Georgia, right? And uh, it's dated to that, to 1.8 million years ago. Uh, we know that uh, there was some kind of hominid in England about at least seven or 800,000 years ago. We assume it's uh, Homo erectus or perhaps a Heidelberg level, maybe Homo ancestor. And, uh, and of course, how did they live? Because throughout this time, we had glaciers. They extended all the way to England. So these, these hominids were living in a very, very cold region. These erectus were living in Africa and Europe then? Europe, uh, Africa, and Asia, and remember. Asia. But in the case of Asia, they were, they were lower, you know, they were closer to the equator. But in Europe, they were close to Arctic, you know, they were close to the glacier areas, right? Uh, they were north in the northern part of France, they were in the northern part of Germany, uh, and they were in England, you know, so uh, not the Neanderthals, perhaps, but for sure some hominid that preceded Neanderthals. Was this an so, ice age? Yeah, this was an ice age, so the question is, how did this hominid live in this cold weather? He had no clothes. And, uh, and so what have they done uh, uh, in order to um, accommodate admixture theory, which is the interbreeding theory that says, you know, that humans and Neanderthals interbred and we are their offspring. Uh, over the years, uh, you know, they've, um, they've modified uh, the Neanderthal. And uh, one thing you will note is that, you know, here I have a picture of it. You'll see that uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, right, uh, they had uh, Neanderthal look like uh, this uh, ape that you see there. And over time, uh, this ape lost his hair, 
<laughs> miraculously, and he and they eventually they had to put him in clothes. So they made him look ever more human just to accommodate this this uh, admixture theory. They did this because it's inconceivable that we would mix or breed with anything without clothes. Well, let's first look at the guys before the clothes. Do you think a woman would sleep with the one in 2013 or the one in 1909? I mean, you know, if a woman saw the one in 1909, she'd run for the hills. But, you know, she might be willing to sleep with the other guy. So, so I mean, <laughs> yeah, if you make Neanderthal look like us, you know, shrink his head a little bit and say, well, if we put some clothes on him, he, he would look like the ordinary businessman. Well, yeah, then people are more willing to accept admixture theory. But this is not science. This is just uh, propaganda. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Uh, you know, they had to look different. And one of the things, one of the features, the outer, because what's morphology? Morphology is the external appearance of uh, an animal, of any animal. Like a poodle is different than a, a Doberman, right? Uh, they're from the same species, as we discussed yesterday, but... They're two different races. They can still mate, have children, viable children. But they look drastically but they different. But they look drastically different. So you, you might think that they're two different species, but they're the same species. They're the species of dog, right? But they have different morphology, different appearance. And in the case of Neanderthal, the question is whether they were a different species or just a different race of hominid, right? That's a good question. Yeah, and, and the first uh, issue is if we came across a Neanderthal, would he be dressed or would he be nude? Did Neanderthals wear clothes? Because that is uh, someone, the external appearance of what you would see out there in the wild. If, if Neanderthal comes clothed, well, you say, well, he looks more or less like me. But if he's just a, a gorilla, you know, with his hairs hanging all over, the question, would a woman who is dressed, you know, not recognize that that's a different species. Well, maybe it's the same situation like the Doberman and the Poodle, where they recognize that it looks completely different, but they still go ahead and breed. Yeah, uh, that could be it, but I think we have to establish whether they had clothes or not, because I think that's an added uh, piece there. In other words, if Neanderthals uh, were nude like a gorilla and we come in dressed, you know, we're, we're, we have different heads to begin with. You recognize this guy with a big nose, flattened head, you know, et cetera. And you say, well, he looks different. But when you don't see him with any clothes and you are wearing clothes, that's got to, you know, it's like uh, the missionaries when they go into the jungle. And here we see the, these, uh, you know, these people, they're, they're completely nude and, and we're dressed. What do they think of us? <laughs> it makes you kind of wonder, you know. What goes through their mind? Say, why is this guy dressed? Yeah. What is that thing that he's got on? What is he? It's so hot. Why is he putting this on? You know. So that's got to that's got to cause already some kind of barrier, some kind of you know. It's a, you you wake up on it. I wonder if dogs stay away from shaved dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not wearing but, clothes. But, yeah, but but that's again that's all natural. Here we're talking about something that you're putting on yeah. all over the uh, body. And the, it speaks to a certain culture. Imagine the Neanderthal now. The Neanderthal is looking at us, and we're dressed, right? In the cold weather. He says, why is he putting clothes on? It's, it's warm today. It brings a it's whole, only three degrees below zero. Yeah, it, it brings a whole <laughs> idea of culture behind it. Because if these people are dressed and some aren't, then the people that are dressed have a whole culture around being dressed. While the people that don't see that, and they're like, okay, these guys are very different from us. It's like yeah. another layer of difference besides the skull size. So, so the point that I'm trying to make here is that we need to determine when clothes were invented. Because that, uh, even though, I mean, the skull is one thing, but then the rest of the body is either closed or not closed. We either use shoes or we don't use shoes, one or the other. And, and the point here is that did Neanderthals have clothes? Did they invent clothes? And again, we go back to Homo erectus, who was already in England, or either him or Heidelberg, one of the two, was already in England 700, 800,000 years ago. There was some kind of hominid there. We found their tools. We didn't find them in a skeleton, but we found the tools. I think they found some, uh, uh, or a couple of years ago, they found also some uh, body parts. But the point is, he was already living in England 800,000 years ago. Arctic weather, glaciers just, you know, came all the way to England. 
And the question is, how did he live? He certainly didn't have clothes. But he had tools. That seems kind of weird. Well, he had tools, yeah, but he didn't need clothes. He had adapted over thousands of years to the cold climates. It's like a monkey with a spear. Yeah, and then from him, assuming that was Erectus, you know, and then we go from Erectus to um, Heidelberg, and from Heidelberg to Neanderthal, right? So over the thousands of years, these are the group, the types that we find, you know, the, the skeletons and heads and so on that we find over time. Did, uh, at some point, did, did any of these hominids have clothes? Uga. So, what should we do with our mixture theorists? Well, let me tell you what I think. Cowabunga!